There are exactly 22 different naturally generated structures in vanilla Minecraft, from the very first being the dungeon that was added in the game in the infinite version of Minecraft more than a decade ago now, to the most recent ancient city that was introduced to us not so long ago in the 1.19 wild update. It's no secret that every structure that's been put into the game up until now adds a ton of new content that greatly expands and evolves the game that we all know and love. Well, almost every structure, anyways. And so the way that this particular tier list works is that it has 8 ranks. To end up on any given tier on this list, each structure will be ranked based on how they generate, what loot they potentially contain, and any other uses they have outside of what they're originally intended for. So to begin with, let's address the elephant in the room. Or in this case, I should say the well in the desert. Yeah, I know that joke didn't even make any sense. The desert well has a 1 in 1000 chance of generating in any desert chunk, as long as its Y level coordinate is 128 and below. Simply meaning, they're quite rare. How rare they are doesn't make much sense to me though, because after walking day and night for potentially thousands upon thousands of blocks, battling all the mobs that spawn at night, your reward is this thing. Why do I even bother? I mean, I guess you could take a quick swim in it to cool off from all the walking, but that's about it. The desert world doesn't have much else going for itself, as it's just a pointless structure purely made for making the desert biomes look somewhat less plain. Anyways, it's the first structure in the F tier, and rightfully so, as it's completely useless in my opinion. But hey, maybe they'd be a bit better if you broke this block and it led straight into a dungeon, which coincidentally is the next structure in the tier list. The dungeon is one of the most iconic structures in the game and was added all the way back in 2010, making it the oldest structure in this tier list. <laughs> what a boomer. Dungeons tend to spawn somewhat frequently in the overworld world and in some very rare cases more than one can spawn in a single chunk. Now what are the odds of that happening? The dungeon also manages to hold up against some of the newest structures in the game due to the decent loot that it provides. It's also incredibly useful for making an easy and decent early game XP grinder to get those sweet sweet enchantment levels. And that's why I believe the dungeon belongs in the C tier, a very solid and decent structure. Falling a little further down in the caverns, next up on the tier list we have mine shafts. If you like spending countless hours exploring and mining in the caves that Minecraft has to offer, then this structure is perfect for you. For the most part, mine shafts generate underground creating large complexes that can sometimes expand for thousands of blocks in every direction. However, in the Badlands biome, they mostly spawn overground and in the mountains and look slightly different to their underground counterparts. The mineshaft itself consists of a maze-like structure made up of endless tunnels and various rooms where you can find a bunch of rails all over the floor, which come in quite handy if you like building roller coasters like me. Whee! You also stumble upon minecarts with chests that contain some decent to valuable loot. Mineshafts are also a great place to easily find exposed ores as they tend to generate all over the floor and walls. Most mineshafts contain abandoned passageways that are filled with a ton of cobwebs that conceal a cave spider spawner. Wow. Cave spiders of course can be quite annoying as their attacks inflict poison on you, but once you take them down and light up the spawner, you should be good to go. You could then use the spawner and turn it into a cave spider farm as they are a great source of early game XP as well as string and spider eyes. Some mineshafts may also spawn with chain blocks that are used to give the illusion of bridges being held up to the cave ceiling. If you manage to pick some of these bad boys up, you could definitely get some uh, interesting uses out of them to say the least. Help me! So if you somehow manage to not get lost exploring these like I usually do, then you'll most likely end up having a good time down here. And so with all things considered, I think mineshafts belong in a decent tier. End up pearling our way out of this mineshaft, next up on the tier list we have villages. Villages spawn in most overworld biomes and are quite common and easy to find, as they tend to stick out like a sore thumb to players exploring the world. Each village is made up of different structures and houses that come in all various shapes and sizes. They provide a ton of resources to the player, of which can be obtained through trading with villagers, looting the chests inside the various structures, stealing crops from farms and killing iron golems for their iron ingots. You can also start raids by entering a village with a bad omen effect that you get from killing a pillager captain. Wow. After successfully defending the village from multiple waves of these nasty hostile mobs, you'll be deemed hero of the village, allowing you to get discounts of up to 55% when trading with villagers. You can also capture and transfer villagers by putting them in boats and bringing them into an automatic breeding farm where they'll plant and farm crops until their inventories are full. Villagers will automatically breed with one another, allowing for you to get a ton of baby villagers. Once they've fully grown into adults, you can put them into trading halls, allowing you to get the most overpowered enchantments in the game. Not only are villagers an amazing structure for regular players, but also an essential one for speedrunners, as it provides them with the essential items needed to enter the nether at a rapid rate. Before the village and pillage update that we got in 2019, villages would have ranked much lower in this tier list, but after getting their giant overhaul, they are by far one of the best structures in the entire game, and in my opinion, belong in the OP tier. Backing out of the village structure, next up on the tier list we have the stronghold. Strongholds tend to generate underground in the overworld, and they can be found by following the direction of which eyes of ender point toward after being thrown. Now, the actual stronghold structure doesn't have much going for itself, other than the library and the end room, as it's mostly filled with empty corridors and rooms that have no use to the player. On the other hand, there are some chests scattered around the structure that can contain some decent loot, like the ones in the altar and the library rooms. Speaking of the library, there are a great place to acquire tons of books, which obviously can be used for enchanting or trading with villagers. And then of course we have the end portal room. The end portal room is the primary attraction of the stronghold as it gives the player access to the end dimension. You can then fight and kill the ender dragon and gather the tons of XP it drops, collect its egg and go through the exit portal, officially marking the completion of the game. If you want to rematch the end dragon, you can respawn it by using four end crystals on the exit portal. However, since end crystals are a little expensive to craft, you can instead create one of these enderman XP farms, which can get you from level 0 to 30 in a single minute. You can also travel to the end's outer islands by going through the gateway portal that spawns after killing the ender dragon for the first time. The outer islands 
islands are filled with a bunch of these purple tree things called chorus plants, which drop chorus fruit that teleports you 80 blocks in every direction when eaten. If you travel along the outer islands long enough, you can also find end cities, but more on those later. And for those reasons alone, I believe that the structure belongs in the S tier. Unfortunately, it's not quite good enough to make it into the OP tier, as the structure itself is pretty lackluster like, and outdated, considering it's been in the game for more than a decade now. Jumping into the nether, up next we have the nether fortress. The fortress is a large complex, made up of bridges, corridors, and various rooms, and it's home to two of the most important mobs in the game, the blaze and wither skeletons. Blaze is spawned in the blaze spawner room, out of you guessed it, the blaze spawner. When these fiery boys are killed, they drop blaze rods, which is an item that could be used as a fuel source in a furnace, or for crafting brewing stands. However, they're most famously known for being converted into blaze powder. Blaze powder of course is used to power a brewing stand to make potions, and also used in the eye of ender crafting recipe. Now, wither skeletons spawn throughout the entire nether fortress, and when killed have a small chance of dropping their skulls. Collecting three of these bad boys will allow you to spawn the wither boss, which when defeated drops a nether star, a crucial ingredient in creating a beacon, which when fully powered can give you OP effects. You can then of course make respective farms for each mob, allowing you to get thousands of skulls and rods per hour. Back at the nether fortress itself, Itself. The only other two rooms in the structure that are somewhat useful to the player are the Never Wart Room and Curved Corridors. Never Wart Rooms obviously contain, you guessed it, Never Warts, which gives the player access to the majority of potion recipes in the game. Curved Corridors are useful as they commonly spawn with a chest that contains some pretty decent loot in it. Overall though, the Never Fortress is an amazing structure, and I think it rightfully joins its powder stronghold in the S tier. Going back into the overworld now, next up on the tier list we have the Desert Pyramid. So gather around, take a seat around the campfire, because I'm about to tell you the age old tale of how Desert Pyramids came about. It's said that over a billion years ago, some green goofy looking alien crash landed his flying saucer into the Minecraft desert. Before fixing his ship and jetting off though, he wanted to leave some sort of structure to leave a message to any civilization that might be wandering around this blocky world. And so, from morning till night, he worked tirelessly gathering up every block he needed to build the structure of his dreams. And so, the very next morning, he got up early and began building. Block by block, all by hand, he built and built and built. However, as he took one last look at the pyramid before going off to fix his ship, he thought a little something was missing. Perhaps a little element of surprise was absent from the structure. So he went back inside and began making a hole at the center of the pyramid's floorboards, which he would transform into a secret treasure room with four chests full of loot. The green alien was feeling a little cheeky though, and so he decided to rig up a pressure plate to some TNT below the treasure room's floorboards, knowing if activated it would get rid of all of the chests and loot inside of it. Anyways, the alien finally fixed his ship up, got back inside of it, and flew off into the sky, never to be seen ever again. And that's the story of the green goofy alien that made the pyramids. <laughs> Uh, well, psych, there was no alien, not just coded into the game. Bye bye, suckers. <laughs> Anyways, no matter who may have made these cool looking structures, one thing that is certain is that they're pretty useful. They generate with four chests that contain great loot, and you can get some free TNT blocks that you can use to blow up your friend's house with. Overall, I'd have to put the desert pyramid in a good tier. Next up on the tier list is the jungle pyramid. Wait, what? Jungle pyramid? Huh? I can't be reading this right, surely. Jungle pi pyramid. Since when is this considered to be shaped like a pyramid? This is a pyramid, but this... Yeah, this, not so much. Anyways, I digress. Jungle temples rarely tend to spawn and are quite rare to spot when they do as they easily blend in with the rest of the jungle's foliage and greenery. The structure itself has three floors, two of which are quite empty and useless. However, the bottom floor is where the explorers can find all their loot. On one side of the bottom floor, there's a leather puzzle, which once all correctly flicked in the right direction, opens a hatch in the second floor that leads right to some treasure. But let's be honest, we all just break right through to the other side because ain't nobody got time for this. Now, on the other side of the bottom floor, there's a slightly more exciting hallway that is rigged with two booby traps that when set off, shoot you with arrows. However, they are quite avoidable and can be easily disarmed by breaking the string on the floor. At the end of the hallway, there's a chest that contains some loot. Both chests in the trap room and the lever room have the same loot table, which can contain some mediocre but sometimes great loot. So, all in all, the jungle temple is quite ugly looking in my opinion. It most certainly is not a pyramid. And in terms of loot, considering that these things are quite hard to find, most of the time it's pretty lackluster. So, in my opinion, the jungle temple belongs in the OK tier. Up next on the tier list, we have the swamp hut. The swamp hut is also known as the witch hut, as it's the only generated structure in the game that spawns the witch mob. The witch isn't very friendly, and if you get too close to her, she tends to throw potions at you that either deal damage or give you negative effects. A cute little black cat also spawns with the witch when the hut generates. Luckily though, this cute little fella isn't harmful like his owner. Isn't that right, buddy? By breaking down the structure, you could turn it into a witch spawner, which can give you hundreds of sticks, gunpowder, redstone, sugar, glowstone, spider eyes, and empty bottles per hour. However, apart from that, the swamp hut doesn't have much else going for itself. I mean, I guess it could be pretty good if you're in need of a cauldron or a crafting table. Eh, I don't know. In my opinion, the swamp pot isn't that good. I think it does Deservedly belongs in the mayor tier. Diving into the next spot in the tier list, we have the ocean monument. Ocean monuments are huge underwater structures that generate in a variety of ocean biomes throughout the overworld. You can usually find them underwater whilst normally exploring your world. However, if you want to directly locate them, you can buy an ocean explorer map off of a cartographer villager and then follow the map's directions. The monuments are filled with guardians and their bigger and stronger counterparts, elder guardians. If you get too close to the structure, the elder guardians will inflict mining fatigue free on you for about five minutes, making it almost impossible to destroy blocks underwater. So make sure to bring yourself some good old trusty buckets of milk. These guys will be your best friend when exploring these structures. Shut up, dog. 
all the cows. The Guardians and Elder Guardians use their spikes to inflict fawn like damage to the player, as well as shooting unavoidable lasers that deal huge amounts of damage. The monument itself can be quite confusing and complicated to navigate due to its unusual vertical and horizontal passageways that lead to chambers. Most of the chambers are empty and therefore useless. However, others can generate filled with tons of sponge blocks, which are extremely useful for soaking up tons of water efficiently. Ocean monuments are one of the few structures in the entire game that don't generate with any loot chests inside of them. However, they do contain treasure chambers where you can find 8 gold blocks encased in dark prismarine. Once you're finally done looting the monument, you're now free to drain all of the water out of it, which is by no means in any way shape or form an absolutely unoriginal or oversaturated video that every Minecraft hardcore YouTuber has overdone. Nope, totally not the case. Instead, what you're probably better off doing is making a guardian farm that generates you tens of thousands of prismarine items as well as some cooked cod. Overall though, I think the ocean monument is one of the cooler looking structures in the game, and due to its uses and decent loot, I think it belongs in the good tier. Falling back down into the stronghold and into the end dimension, up next on the tier list we have the end cities. End cities are castle like structures that generate in the outer islands of the end and are accessed by entering the end gateways that generate after killing the ender dragon for the first time. In some cases, it could potentially take thousands and thousands of blocks before finally finding an end city, as they tend to be quite rare and generate far away from the end gateway spawn point. End cities are made up of various structures, meaning that some could be bigger than others. However, if the RNG gods tend to be on your side, you may come across a huge end city such as this one, which is home to some of the most overpowered items in the entire game. However, getting to those items might be a bit of a hassle, as you'll find a bunch of shulkers that spawn around the city defending their loot. These annoying things spit out long range attacks called shulker bullets that deal a good amount of damage, as well as giving the player levitation for 10 seconds, so water buckets are your best friend when you come to loot this structure. They also drop shulker shells, which are incredibly valuable items that allow you to craft shulker boxes. These are of course the best storage in the entire game, as they allow you to store up to 1728 items in a single inventory space. However, despite how great shulker boxes are, the main reason that players travel thousands of blocks to find end cities is for the insane loot that you can find in the end chips and loot rooms. Both of these structures contain chests with some of the best loot in the entire game, with the likes of diamond armor and tools with great enchantments generating frequently. Not only do they both contain great loot, but the end chip is home to one of the most powerful items in the entire game as well, that of course being the elytra. The elytra is not only just an extremely fun piece of equipment to use to glide down tall mountains, but it's also the best mode of transportation in Minecraft. I don't think this is much of a surprise my friends, but the end city structure goes straight into the overpowered tier. Flying toward the next structure on the tier list, we have the igloo. These cozy looking structures generate in all snowy biomes except for the ice spikes and are somewhat rare to find. However, they're particularly useful for surviving the first night of your world, as they contain a crafting table, a furnace, and a bed to snuggle up in. Underneath the carpet and its floorboards, there's a 50% chance that the igloo contains a mysteriously hidden secret basement. After heading down a ladder, you'll see this strange looking room that has a chest, a brewing stand, and two villagers, one of which is a zombie. In the chest, you'll always find a golden apple, along with the chance of it also containing various other items. The brewing stand contains a splash potion of weakness. You can use both the golden apple and the potion on the zombie villager to cure it back to a normal villager. As a sign of its gratitude, the villager will now give you discounts on its trades, similar to the hero of the village effect. However, apart from providing you with the items to cure a zombie villager and giving you a place to sleep for the first night, the igloo is a pretty mere structure, and that's why I think it belongs in the E tier. Taking a deep dive underground now, the next structures on the tier list are the overworld fossils and the never fossils. The fossils that are found in the overworld can only generate underground in desert and swamp biomes. They're very rare as they only have a 1 in 64 chance in generating. Fossils tend to vary in shape and size as they can either generate as a skull or spine structure belonging to some sort of gigantic animal. Depending on how deep underground the fossils generate, it will spawn with either diamond or coal ore spawning in and around it. So if you manage to happen to spot some bone blocks deep underground, get ready to mine some diamonds. Anyways, the structure's cousin, the Neville fossil, can be found in, well, the Never, but more specifically in Soul Sand Valleys. These are much easier to find in comparison to their overworld counterpart as they generate more frequently and can be found overground instead of being buried. Never fossils can generate in a vast number of different sizes, but mainly resemble rib cages and the one other exception generating as an F-shaped sternum fossil. The one similarity that both overworld and never fossils do have, of course, is that they're both entirely made up of bone blocks. Bone blocks can be placed under a note block to create a xylophone sound. However, their main use is being able to be converted into nine pieces of bone meal, which is obviously used to grow crops super fast. Apart from that though, I'd consider the structure to be quite meh. Next up on the tier list, we have the woodland mansion structure. Woodland mansions are, well, mansions, meaning they're gigantic in size and can be easily spotted in dark forest biomes. Similarly to the Osha monument, it can be located using an explorer's map that you can buy from cartographer villages. The Woodland Mansion itself has three different floors and can generate with hundreds of different types of rooms, with some just being decorative that have no uses, others that contain various blocks and loot that could be great use to the player, or extremely rare secret rooms like this one that can spawn a block of diamond encased in obsidian. The mansion also contains gel cell rooms where you can find the newly added 1.19 LA mob. Oh, look how cute it is. A laser extremely helpful as you can give it any item and it will go around collecting more of that exact same item, as long as it's dropped on the floor. Sprinkled throughout the mansion's rooms, you can also find evokers and vindicators. These mobs are extremely hostile, with the vindicators running at you with an iron axe. Why are you running? Why are you running? 
The evokers spawn in fangs from the ground, as well as these annoying little shits that attack you. I really hate them. When killed, both the vindicators and evokers drop emeralds, whilst the evokers are exclusively the only mob in the game that can drop totems of undying. The totem of undying is of course one of the most OP items in the game, and is essential for hardcore players, as they can save you from certain death. And for those reasons alone, I believe that the Woodland Mansion deservedly lands as the first structure to enter the Great Tier. Diving back into the ocean once again, up next on the tier list we have the Ocean Ruins. Ocean Ruins generate in either cold or warm oceans, and depending on their biome, they can be composed of either stone bricks or sandstone bricks. The ruins come in all shapes and sizes, with the bigger variant of the structure only having a 30% chance of generating, whilst the more common and the much smaller ones have a 70% chance of generating. Ocean Ruins are home to drowned zombies, which are exactly like their zombie counterpart, except, well, they're drowned. Now, that's not entirely true, as drowned zombies are the only mob in the game that have a chance of dropping copper ingots, wow. as well as being the only mob that have a very small chance of spawning with and dropping a trident when killed. The ruins themselves spawn with chests that contain some decent loot, along with the chance of containing a buried treasure map, which leads to another structure on this tier list, but more on that in a second. With all of that being said, I think that the ocean ruin structure belongs in the okay tier. Next up on the tier list, we have the buried treasure chest. It's actually kind of funny to think that this single chest is considered an entire structure, but anyways. Buried treasure chests mostly spawn in beach biomes and always generate underground and concealed by either sand or gravel, making them pretty much impossible to find unless you have a buried treasure map. The chests have a 100% chance of containing a heart of the sea, which is the vital ingredient in crafting a conduit, a structure that gives the player water breathing, night vision, and haste when underwater. They also kill any drowned that try to attack you in a close radius. The chest also commonly generates with iron and gold ingots, as well as having a pretty good chance of containing TNT, emeralds, and diamonds, along with a few other items. All things considered though, I think the buried treasure chest belongs in the okay tier, so sorry to all the pirates out there. Staying on the theme of buried treasure, and more specifically pirates, next up on the tier list we have the shipwrecks. Shipwrecks are obviously ships that have been, well, how do I put this? Wrecked. Who would have thunk it? With most ships spawning either upright, sideways, or upside down. However, it is possible to find some that are completely intact. Shipwrecks generate in all oceanic biomes, and on some rare occasions, they somehow end up in places like this iceberg. Hey, do you need some help up there, buddy? Shipwrecks will always spawn with three or less chests, depending on the ship's condition, of which all have their own respective items. The supply chest that spawns in the bow of the ship has some useful early game items, such as enchanted leather armor, crops, and TNT. The treasure chest that spawns in the upper section of the stern contains valuable ingots and other goodies. And finally, the map chest that spawns in the bottom section of the stern contains exploring supplies such as the buried treasure map, a compass, and a clock. Anyways, with all that being said, I think it rightfully belongs in a decent tier. Breaking into the next spot in the tier list, we have the pillager outpost. The pillager outpost is where pillagers kind of just hang out and be bros and have a lay strapped in cages. Nah, screw these guys. Okay, only one thing left to do. There you go, my little light blue friends. Be free. Anyways, pillager outposts are fairly rare structures, and they generate in pretty much every biome that villages also spawn in. The outpost itself is made up of different structures, including scarecrows, tents, horizontal logs, cages, and of course the large tower where the pillagers themselves reside. Atop of the tower is where the only chest in the entire structure is located. The chest's loot isn't the best. However, you're likely to get the newly added goat horn item, which I think makes for a pretty epic way of getting your troops ready for an epic war. Get ready, troops. We're going to war today. Fight with your lives, and we should take them all down. Now who's with me? Oh, oh, okay. I'll take that as a nerf. What makes the outpost so good though, are the pillager captains that spawn infinitely. This of course means you can pretty much have the bad omen effect permanently, allowing you to create possibly one of the most OP farms in the game. That of course being a raid farm. These of course allow you to farm a ton of emeralds, and more importantly, heaps of totems of undying, making them an essential farm to have if you're a hardcore player. The sheer fact that the structure gives you access to one of the most OP farms in the game boosts this place in the tier list by a lot. And so with that being said, I think that it deserves a spot in the A tier. Teleporting back into the nether one last time today, next on the tier list we have the Bastion Remnants. Bastion Remnants are huge castle-like structures that generate in every single nether biome except basalt deltas. There are four distinct variants of remnant, with each having their own unique shape and a specific set of loot. With the bridges being considered having the worst loot, albeit it's still great, and the treasure room having the best loot. Every structure also has the chance of landing the generic loot table, which has the chance of generating extremely valuable items like ancient debris, netherite scrap, and the exclusive pigstack music disc, which by the way is an absolute bomb. Each remnant also contains a ton of golden blocks sprawled throughout, some being visible and most others being buried around the structure. However, loot in bastions isn't an easy task, as each remnant is home to the extremely hostile piglins and piglin brute mobs. And when I say extremely hostile, I mean extremely hostile. Okay, this looks pretty promising. Let's just take a look inside. Ah! Don't worry though, guys, because in this video, I'll be showing you a brand new technique that will help you defeat each piglin brute in a matter of seconds. Here's how you do it. And now we can simply loot the bastions in peace. Easy peasy. Anyways, back in the treasure room remnant, at the very bottom of it lies a magma cube spawner, which is exclusive to this bastion. You can of course camp out the spawner to kill magma cubes for their magma cream, allowing you to make as many fire resistant potions as your heart desires. And with all that being said, there's no doubt in my mind that the bastion remnants are one of the most overpowered structures in the game. I think that they deservedly joined the village and the end city in the S plus tier. Teleporting back to the overworld for the last time in this video, up next on the tier list we have the ruin portals. Ruin portals are well portals that have been ruined. <sighs> I swear I'll never get tired of doing these terrible jokes. Anyways, ruin portals 
portals are the only structure in the entire game that can generate both in the overworld and in the nether. They usually generate like the normal sized portals that we're used to, but in some Damn, rare cases, son. they can also spawn as these huge variations of themselves. Every ruined portal is guaranteed to spawn with one chest, which has the chance of spawning various golden items. Depending on the structure's size, it can spawn anywhere between one to six gold blocks, except for ruined underscore portal dash portal underscore three. It spawns none. F portal three. All my homies hate portal three. Anyways, ruined portals also make for a much more convenient way of entering the nether, as a lot of the time they have most of the obsidian frame almost completely filled out. Overall though, I do like the addition of ruined portals and the liveliness it brings to the Minecraft overworld. However, it doesn't have the greatest chest loot and it really only has one practical use. So for that reason, I think that the ruined portal is okay. Digging down toward our next structure in the tier list, we have the amethyst geode. Now, this is probably the only structure in the tier list where I'm kind of questioning if it even is a structure or not, but according to the official Minecraft wiki it is, so I guess we're ranking it in the tier list. Amethyst geodes are a terrain-like structure that can be found underground in the overworld. Most geodes spawn with a crack that exposes the inside of the structure, however, there is a 5% chance that they can spawn fully intact as a sphere. Geodes consist of three layers, an outer layer of smooth basalt, a middle layer of calcite, and a hollow layer of amethyst blocks. At the current time of making this video, the only use that each of these blocks has is for decoration purposes. However, if you mind the amethyst clusters that spawn inside of the geode, you'll get amethyst shards. Amethyst shards are pretty niche, as they have a few unique crafting recipes. They can be turned into amethyst blocks like the ones found in the geode. You can make tinted glass blocks out of them, which stops any light sources from going through it. And of course, you can use them to craft a spyglass, which is a nifty little item that lets players see things from afar. You can also use the amethyst shards on our cute little LA friends whilst they dance, causing breeding like particles to appear and resulting in the duplication of LA's. All in all, though, the amethyst geode is a borderline F tier for me. However, since it has some cool decoration blocks, and of course, being the source of amethyst shards that introduces some new items and mechanics into the game, I think that alone brings its rating up a notch. And for me, it belongs in the mayor tier. And lastly, the final entry in the tier list, digging a little deeper into the caverns, we have the ancient cities. Ancient cities can only generate underground at and below the minus 51 Y level coordinate where the deep dark biome is located. The deep dark is, well, yep, I'm about to do it again. Very dark, as it has very minimal light, with only a few blocks as a source of illumination. The city is made to resemble a palace like design, where chests can be found throughout most of its structures, with the majority of them having the chance of containing some familiar loot. These same chests also have the chance to contain three exclusive items only found in ancient cities, such as the swift sneak enchantment, echo shards, and disc 5 fragments. Using nine of the disc 5 fragments in a crafting table like this allows you to assemble and create the music disc named 5. This makes it the only craftable disc in the game, and probably one of the most spookiest ones too. Swift sneak enchantment can be applied to leggings, increasing the speed at which the player can sneak at. And finally, the echo shards can be used in a crafting table around the compass to create the recovery compass, which is used to point to and locate the player's last death. Now, I imagine that the recovery compass will come quite in handy for most players when exploring ancient cities, because you'll probably end up dying a few times to Minecraft's newest boss, the Warden. My name is Jeff. Well, technically speaking, the Wooden isn't considered a boss mob, as it doesn't have its own health bar like the Wither and Ender Dragon do. However, don't let the lack of health bar deceive you, as this big boy has exactly 250 hearts worth of health, the same amount as the Wither and Ender Dragon combined. Huh? Not only is the Wooden extremely tanky, taking forever to kill, but he also does a ton of damage with his melee attacks and range attacks. The Warden also gives the player the darkness effect, making pretty much everything impossible to see. In its current state though, it's probably best just to sneak around when exploring the ancient cities and avoid spawning in the ward entirely, as even if you do manage to miraculously kill it, you'll be left quite disappointed knowing it only drops a small amount of XP and a single sculpt catalyst. Anyways, the ancient city introduces one of the most unique and grand looking structures in all of Minecraft, as well as a terrifyingly cool new mob and some cool new items and enchantments that expands the world of Minecraft a little bit more. So for those reasons, I think it belongs in the A tier. If the Warden had better drops though, it would definitely move up a tier or two in the list. If you disagree with my tier list, let me know why in the comments below and let me know how you you'd rank them instead. Bye!